Hey everybody, another hiatus vlog here. Uh, I took a break last week. Uh, as you can see, I've been packing. Uh, so I had a good just kind of dialogue with some folks uh, based on the previous vlog about like tips and tricks or whatever to uh, pack your collection. And I'll say the a couple of takeaways from my conversation and from my experience is you can see most of these board games here are not packed. Anything that's like a you know normal sized uh, board game, I'm just going to leave out throw them in the car you know maybe that's like two trips I don't have that many games I mean I got <laughs> enough but I did not so many uh, so those are going to remain unpacked and then in some of these boxes here I've got like miniatures and terrain and stuff but also like little games like card games I've got like one box basically with all my little uh, you know small card games and so that's been kind of the the general gist of it the only other tip I would give is what we're doing and this is really based on how much time you have to pack but uh, I've just been knocking out like two, three boxes a day, you know, not, not just here, obviously, but also like kitchen items. Uh, my wife the other day packed up uh, a couple of cabinets of ki kitchen stuff, but she left like, you know, two plates and a couple of bowls and things. And we're just going to, you know, wash them as we use them and that kind of thing. Just so it's all packed away. Uh, so that's been kind of a good thing and keep yourself disciplined and say, just going to pack two boxes today and two boxes tomorrow and two boxes and then it's not overwhelming and then before you know it you're like well the house is getting pretty packed here so uh that's that's about it as far as the packing <laughs> update goes i do have a couple things i want to talk about and then i got kind of a main topic at the end of this uh, the one cool thing that we've been doing online on board game arena is actually you can do tournaments and you can set it up uh, to do, I think, a couple of different formats. I'm not sure, but we did like uh, like a Swiss format thing. We did, we did a Stone Age tournament. I think we're going to do Race for the Galaxy next. And you can set sort of a time limit on the number of days for a round and things. And it auto pairs you. And, you know, it keeps track of the standings and tiebreakers and whatnot. And that's been really fun. So my game group and I did that. Uh, we just did the Stone Age one. And that took us probably four days or something to get through the whole thing. And uh, really cool. I didn't even know you could do that on Board Game Arena and the fact that it keeps track of all that stuff. So that's kind of fun. It adds a little bit of flair to it. Uh, we played for some Geek Gold on Board Game Geek. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. And then two other sort of uh, shout outs here. Uh, I think people are done giving away free stuff, really. Uh, so I don't. I didn't really see a lot in the news. I might have missed some stuff, some free miniature game rules or, you know, some downloadable thing. Uh, but one thing that I will have a link to is there, you can get like new uh, sort of packs for Keyforge that you can download and print out. And so you can get a couple of packs and play with some of the new set that's going to come out. It's obviously been delayed a little bit. Uh, so that's that's kind of a cool thing. That was the only real free thing uh, I found other than I wanted to also highlight something that some other content creator YouTube folks are doing uh, that I've seen that are specific for this kind of lockdown, you know, situation uh, that we're in. Uh, first thing is uh, Secret Cabal, uh, Jamie Kiki, he did a video comparing and contrasting and kind of reviewing uh, Tabletop Simulator versus uh, Tabletopia. It is a really good breakdown of both of those, and if you don't really, you know, you're not really familiar with those, I would definitely take a look uh, at his video, and I'll put a link to it below. And I, I, my, my thoughts kind of line up with his in terms of uh, what he likes about one versus the other and which one he maybe likes a little bit more. And like I mentioned in the last vlog, I've kind of gotten over my, I don't know, my dislike of uh, Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia in general. Uh, and, and I had a lot of fun uh, using those. So, But he's got, he goes in really uh, in depth and all that. So I'll put a link to his video there. And then also, uh, Shut Up and Sit Down. They also did like kind of a how-to on Tabletop Simulator, but they also did a couple other videos, and I'll put links to all their videos, um, that are, you know, they're solo game focused, they're print and play game focused. I, I, I would say, other than the how to play Tabletop Simulator, my, I would say rush out and, and watch the one on the print and play games, because uh, that's, that's something that I had been into years and years ago, and checking out, you know, new designs and stuff, and kind of being involved with the print and play guild and stuff, and checking stuff out there. And so that's something I just sort of you know, lost sight of or lost track of over the years. And uh, they do a really good job of highlighting some stuff. And there will be links in the video on the print and play. There's links to like the winners of the Board Game Geek print and play contests over the last like, I don't know, almost 10 years 
underneath that video. So definitely go look there and then you can go and find, um, not geek lists, but there's lists of, you know, all of those games and there's some, some good stuff to kind of keep you, uh, entertained as it were. Uh, and then the last thing I'll mention before jumping to the main topic is, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of playing games online and stuff. So I think I'm going to do, I've got it kind of pared down to do a top 10 of my favorite games <laughs> during lockdown or some nonsense. I'm not going to try to phrase it like that. Cause I, I don't know. That is not, that seems kind of cheese ball, but you know, there's been a lot of games that I've had a chance to play online and either go, Oh yeah, that's why I got rid of that game. <laughs> or, you know, even though I might've liked it, you know, for five or six plays or whatever. And then I was, and I still like think it's a fine game, but I was like, well, okay, this is why it's no longer in the collection. Or I played a couple game. I mean, to give you a sneak preview of Navigador from uh, Max Gertz and Rio Grande games. And I'm like, man, I need to play that again. Cause I haven't played that in so long. And I've got a couple games going on now of, uh, of that on, uh, Yucata. So, yeah, that's a really, really cool game. So I'm going to try to make some kind of top 10 list. I don't know what the criteria or, you know, whatever is going to be. Uh, but I'll do something like that based on all this online gaming uh, that I've been doing. Uh, so that's kind of the general over, you know, nonsense news stuff. But I did want to talk a little bit about... Um, it's kind of a serious topic, but I want to keep it lighthearted because I try to keep things lighthearted. And I, I kind of... And I'll preface this by saying I probably doesn't come across in my review videos, but I'm like eternally optimistic, probably to a fault about things and how things are going to work out. And, you know, and, you know, I'm optimistic about what people's intentions are sometimes and I, maybe I shouldn't be. Uh, so, yeah. But um, so I have a poll on my board game Geek Guild and I made a Facebook post about this on the page. And this has to do with the Gen Con, because that's something that obviously I look forward to every single year. And I would say right now, it's very interesting to see if that convention is even going to happen. Now, I have no, I don't, you know, I'll say this. I've talked to a number of people. This is not the kind of thing that a journalist, which I am not, should, should repeat, because it is kind of rumor mongering. So take this with like a massive planet filled with salt, but I'm pretty sure they're going to cancel it. Uh, because just from the people that I've talked to that have talked to other people there, it's all rumor. It's all nonsense. Don't hold anybody's feet to the fire if they don't end up canceling it. Uh, well, I'll get to why I think that they might not cancel it or a reason they may not cancel it, but I'm pretty sure they're canceling it. Like I, I would be shocked if they do not cancel Gen Con based on a whole bunch of things. Okay, great. So maybe they do, maybe they don't. So one thing that got me, so I was, I was convinced in my brain uh, that they were going to cancel it. So, I, you know, for a while now, I've been like, there's no way they can do this. It just it doesn't make sense. It's not safe and all this stuff. You know, my brain goes all over the place. Don't jump on me for thinking it's not safe or thinking it's safe, please. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a professional. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> and so, but the state of Indiana the other day announced that they are going to go through like a phased reopening, like a lot of states, a lot of countries are doing right now. So based on their projections in terms of, you know, if the curve stays flat, starts to slope down, that kind of stuff, there's no spikes in cases. They are looking at opening up everything by like around July 4th. So that's sporting events, that's festivals, conventions, you know, that kind of thing. So as a state, Indiana is going to be open for business completely 100% back to quote unquote normal by early July. Now, Gen Con starts at the very end of July, right into the first week of August. So one thing that a convention uh, almost has to have happen is have them be shut down by the government, by the state or whatever, so they can then cancel their convention and then be able to collect uh, insurance or just get some sort of financial buffer so they don't renege on their contracts with the hotels and the convention centers and get screwed that way. I mean, it's all compl complex, but really the convention can't just say by themselves, hey, we don't think this is safe. We don't think anybody's going to come because of the virus situation. So we're going to cancel and then they're going to have to pay fees or whatever and they're going to lose all the income of people that are coming. So... But what they do typically is wait for the state or the city or somebody to shut them down. 
Now, it's still possible to say the city of Indianapolis might say, well, no, you can't have Gen Con here because we don't want those, all those people coming to our city. And, it, and, you know, even the state of Indiana might make an exception because it's 75,000, give or take, people. And that's just attendees. I mean, that's not everybody else. The vendors and stuff, they don't count those in the attendees. So it's you look at like 75 plus thousand people that are going to come from all over the world from who knows where and, you know, what kind of situation uh, that their particular virus situation is like back home, whether it's a different state or a different uh, city or country. So I, had, I posed a question because once I saw that report that, you know, the state of Indiana was like, yeah, we're open for business. Then I was like thinking, hmm, so they may not be forced to shut down and they may have finagle a way that they're going to stay open. And I think to myself, I'm like, if they do have it, would I go? And my wife and I had a very serious conversation about, is it responsible for me to go? Is it, you know, is it the smart thing for me to go? Is it safe? Is it, is it a disrespect of me to go and then come back and then be around 75,000 people and then to be around her or my parents or anybody else that I'm going to be around when I come back? And so I'll just tell you, I talked about, we'll have a link to this poll on the, on the Board Game Geek Guild, but right now I'm leaning no. So even if they do have Gen Con, right now, right this second, I'm like, absolutely no, I won't go. Now, as, but the caveat to me is like, okay, I'm going to wait and see you know, what it looks like June 1st, because this, this video is being recorded first a uh, couple days of May. And so, well, okay, curve's going down, number of deaths are going down, number of cases are going down everywhere across the world. And a lot of the projection stuff that I read shows it like first week or two of June, it'll be way down. Um, and so, but you still have, again, that's with all the social distancing in place. So the one site that I can think of, and I'll link to the site because it's, 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 you, you, you can go investigate it on yourself, but the site basically has said, I haven't checked in a couple days, but it was basically right around like June 1st, June 5th for the whole world. It would be back down to like really, really non-existent new cases and deaths. Uh, that's new cases and new deaths, um, right around that time. But that's with everybody sticking to the social distancing guidelines throughout all of May, which is not happening everywhere. So I don't know what that's going to entail there. So, yeah. So I don't, I don't know the right answer. Please don't argue about it. Who cares? Like, let's just, whoever is making the decision, make the right one, for God's sake. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. I have my opinions, but it's not, I'm not, this is on the public platform, so you don't get to know them. <laughs> anyway. If you really want to know, don't ask me because I don't really want to talk about it. But anyway, so my question to you all is like, okay, as things are now, let's say they did have Gen Con or they did have Essen or they did have uh, Board Game Geek Con in the fall. Would you go right now? Like if they did not cancel. And I'm just curious about your thoughts there. That I would 100% love to hear your opinions on and everything like that. And definitely if you want to color up that opinion and with some uh, other opinions or facts, that's fine. Let's just try to keep, keep, be nice about it because we're all in this together regardless of who you think is running what, you know. All right. So I'm just curious about that idea. Uh, take care of yourselves and definitely check out the links below in, in the under the goobly-doo thing. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting all this stuff to the new house, getting my, like, little studio thing set up. I'm really excited about that. I mean, it's been, it's been a good, like, uh, sometimes you get that anticipation in your stomach. You get that little bubbly feeling, right? And like, I'm getting that and I'm like, oh, I'm going to arrange this. I'm going to hang this camera here. So I'm like, have this whole, whole thing. Cause this is like, you know, I started off doing this on the floor in my office, you know, years ago. Cause that's where I could do it. Or sometimes on the kitchen table, I would do it. And then, you know, my oldest son moved out a few years ago now. I mean, several years ago now. So I was able to... Uh, you know, move all that stuff up here. And well, there was a time in when I set up the office with the shelves and stuff. So I've been like slowly like evolving the studio space. And so now instead of just like jerry rigging uh, my son's old room, now I have like another room and I'm like, okay, yeah. So this is going to be fun to kind of just tinker. It's like my little space. So it's great. Selfishly love it. Uh, okay. Take care of yourselves. All right. Be safe.
See you at a convention one year. <laughs> All right, bye.